my message is he can save himself a phone call. We did that back in 2019. The Tories promised that they would get things done, do the job properly, and they've let us down. They've betrayed us on multiple factors. Richard Tice, double-digit vote shares in both Wellingborough and Kingswood. Nigel Farage says you've come of age as a party. He's not going to need to come back to lead you into an election now, is he? Well, we're delighted with this progress, our best to ever by-election results. It took UKIP about 18 years to get to 12%. Uh, we've achieved this in just under three years. And yeah, both candidates, Ben Habib in Wellingborough, Rupert Lowe in Kingswood, did an amazing job. And the Tories are absolutely terrified of the progress we are making. And, and we're on the map now. The Lib Dems seem to have disappeared. And as far as we're concerned, it's onwards and upwards from here. There'll be people who are looking at your vote share, impressive though it is, and somehow wondering how you could be doing better. I mean, there are some polls, some national opinion polls that show you doing even better than this. How can you, how are you going to kick on? Because even though you've had a good night, your best night yet, there will be people out there who say your poll numbers are still a bit of a mirage. What do you say to those people? Well, we've just proven that completely wrong because they were saying that we were polling at sort of 10, 11, 12, 13 percent, but we weren't getting that in the by-elections. Now we've got that in the by-elections. That completely uh, removes that concern. But yeah, sure, I'm ambitious like those who, who say we, we want to do better. We, we all want to do better. I want to go uh, onwards and upwards from here. And we've got to keep working hard all the way through to the general election. And we say to people, this is not a one-term election project. This is a, a medium-term project. It's multi-elections. We want proportional representation so that we get fair representation in the House of Commons, something we actually share with the, uh, the Liberal Democrats and a number of other parties. And we're putting forward very different policies from the two main parties. Both of them, frankly, represent forms of socialism, very high tax, high wasteful government spending, nanny state regulations, mass low-skilled immigration, and the multi-trillion cost of net zero, which all of which leads to, as I predicted at the beginning of January, uh, zero growth. In fact, we're now, we've slipped into recession, as I feared we would. You can't grow an economy with those burdens, and that's why the policies that we're putting forward, and we're putting forward some more a week on Saturday, across the whole range of different uh, departments, will show what we need to do to get the country growing again. I don't doubt there'll be Tories in CCHQ, Conservative Campaign Headquarters and Number 10, looking at the Kingswood result in particular. Their candidate, Sam Bromley, won 34.9% of the vote. Rupert Lowe, your candidate, won 10.4% of the vote. The winning Labour candidate won 44.9% of the vote. I mean, you don't need a maths degree to work out that if you add the reform vote to the Conservative vote, which the Conservative candidate wins. And so if the Conservatives come to you, if Rishi Sunak rings you up and says, Richard, come on, it doesn't make any sense for the right to be split. We're handing this to Keir Starmer on a plate. Let's do a deal. What is your message to Rishi Sunak if these results mean uh, he can save, he can save himself. My message is he can save himself a phone call. We did that back in 2019. The Tories promised that they would get things done, do the job properly, and they've let us down. They've betrayed us on multiple factors. Uh, including rising taxes, wasteful government spending. They promised to take control of the borders and they've done exactly the opposite. So no, he can save himself a phone call. We're not doing any form of deals. We're putting forward very different policies to the Conservatives in a number of areas to the British people. And we'll be standing at 630 seats. We've got over 400 candidates already allocated, hundreds more going through the vetting process. So yeah, we are, uh, we're now, as, as Nigel Farage says, we, we, we're coming of age. We're pushing forward. No one's saying it's easy. Of course it's not. Uh, it probably shouldn't be easy because we're talking about policies to how to, to run and organise the country. But we've got a very strong, clear view of what needs to be done and we're going to put it to the British people. As a true Conservative, as I think, you know, Reform UK would call call yourselves sort of the true Conservatives of, of British politics, do you really think a term or two of Keir Starmer government is a price worth paying for the destruction of the Conservative Party. You know, Keir Starmer, if you look at these numbers, you know, if the Wellingborough spring, uh, if the Wellingborough swing was replicated nationally, the Tories would be down to four seats. Surely you wouldn't want to see the Labour Party that dominant. 
look, you can't reward failure with more incumbency. And the Tories, frankly, they, given what they've done to the country and breaking the country, they deserve to be punished. And I think they will be punished and quite right too. Look, equally, Starmageddon is what I call the disaster that uh, the Labour will inflict on the country. And our policies, I believe, are the policies that will save Britain. So they're both forms of, the two main parties are forms, forms of socialism, high taxes, wasteful government spending, massive obsession with net zero, all of which will bankrupt the country. And, sorry, one second. Um, and I know it's your fate, Richard, for in every in every interview to be asked about Nigel, but how do you think Nigel will look at these results? Will he say, think, well, that's job done, I can, I can concentrate on telly in America, or do you think, I'd like a bit of that, he'll be back? Look, I've been very clear and open about this. The more help that Nigel feels able to give, the better, because it's a massive job, all hands to the wheel. But look, nigel has he's got a broadcasting career. You've obviously got the American election. So he's got an important decision to make. And uh, he's looking at these results. Uh, he's already phoned me and said, you know, that's outstanding uh, in terms of rate of progress. Uh, so the more help he can give, great. But we're pushing on hard. And we're putting forward a whole range of policies across a range of areas a week on Saturday that I think will interest a lot of people. And that's that's what one would expect in an election year. What's your message to Conservative MPs who now want out? Is it too late for Conservative MPs to jump ship to Reform UK? Well, the truth is, there's only certain Conservative MPs that I would consider would pass our vetting process, frankly. Uh, in terms of understanding and agreeing with our values and our principles. Uh, many of them are, are some form of sort of socialist, social democrats, and that's why the party's got into the pickle that it's in. So, uh, but for those who realise that the, the writing's on the wall, who agree with our policies and our values, then they've got my number. They can give me a call day or night. Well, Richard Tice, thank you very much indeed. Is it still that? Richard, I'm still here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Sorry, just a separate question. We're doing an item later on TikTok, Richard. Um, we're discussing politicians who use TikTok later today, Richard, with almost 47,000 followers, nearly 600,000 likes and millions of views. Reform UK is by far the most successful UK political party on the app. Why are you cutting through where others aren't? It's a really good question. I'll be completely honest. I'm not quite sure. I'm surprised none of the other <laughs> parties are not using it at all. But we seem to be making progress, particularly, and I'm very excited to say, amongst young people who use the app. And, and young people have been so badly let down by the two main parties. They're looking around and they're, they're hearing about reform. They're hearing about our policies on student loans, how we need to control the population so they can get on the housing ladder and other policies. And they're saying, I like a bit of that. It's not what you usually expect of on TikTok, Richard. You're not dancing, are you? No, I tell you what, you do not want to see me dance. I've got to be honest. <laughs> well, look, given the results last night, we might we may do yet. Richard Tice, thank you very much.